So what exactly is a heart attack? Now a heart attack, the medical term for it, is a myocardial infarction. Now if we break that down, myocardial infarction. Myo means muscle, cardial, obviously referring to cardiac, which is the heart, and infarction, meaning dead tissue, and in this case, due to the lack of oxygen flow. So you could kind of piece it together where that name comes from and how it can lead to a heart attack. It's basically saying that there's dead tissue in response to low blood flow leading because of low oxygen. That dead tissue is causing an effect on the cardiac muscle. Now the cardiac muscle, the heart, is a big muscle. There's different parts to it, and what's special about it is it has its own electrical system, and it can even function outside of your body, provided that there is oxygen supply. With an adequate oxygen supply and an adequate fuel source, the heart can be very efficiently, like one of the most efficient muscles in our bodies. Now there are other parts of the muscles that are all related to how the heart works. The most notably are the vessels that connect to the heart. There's the arteries and veins and capillaries. Most of them, not the capillaries, are surrounded by smooth muscle cells and control the resistance that the blood flows through. That's one of the main ways that blood pressure is maintained. So how does all of this relate to heart attacks? Well, heart attacks, as I said, is a myocardial infarction. A heart attack occurs when there's a decreased blood flow to a part of the heart. Now to understand this, the heart has three main blood vessels. They're named the coronary arteries. There's two left and one right, and they kind of circumflex on each other, turn around, and all kind of connect to each other at the end anyway, through what's called as collateral circulations or anastomoses. So in a way, all three of these blood vessels are connected, but they do have their roles in supplying the heart in their respective areas. Now, in a chronic phase, meaning that over a long period of time, if there is a reduction in blood flow, these collateral circulations, the circulations where all three of them kind of meet, kind of take over and kind of like reestablish blood flow to that area. But in an acute situation, acute meaning in a short time, if it happens in a short time where there's a restriction in blood flow, there's not enough time to develop those bridges and to allow more blood flow to circumnavigate the obstruction or something. So at that point, you get low blood flow immediately to that area that that blood uh, vessel is supplying. And if you know anything about the heart, the heart is very energy demanding. It requires a constant amount of blood flow. So an immediate stop to blood flow leads to cardiac death in under 20 minutes. Now there's an argument in the medical community about like, oh, what's the most important organ? And obviously all the organs are important. You got the heart, obviously, you got the brain, you got the liver, you got the kidneys, and all of these organs and a lot more are very important to the well-being, the homeostasis of the body. But the heart and brain are one of the two organs that if they don't receive blood flow constantly, they can die really quickly. The brain, it can even be less than 20 minutes. The heart muscles, 20 minutes, this, there's muscle tissue that's gonna start to die. And the thing about muscle is that it does not come back. The heart and the brain, their tissues don't really come back. What happens is once the blood flow stops and 20 minutes goes, those cells are gonna start to die. And as they die, over the next few days, few weeks, few months, the repair process occurs. And that repair process usually involves re-establishment of the tissue, not with the normal muscle that's usually there, but with scar tissue. And scar tissue is not that functional. It's great for repairing wounds, which is why our bodies have developed this sort of mechanism. But that leads to ir irreparable function. You can't really function with scar tissue. So how does this all even occur? Like how does a heart attack even start? Well, a heart attack most commonly is started due to an atherosclerotic plaque. And that's like a big word, but it's basically fatty deposits in those coronary arteries that lead to an obstruction. Now it's not the development of the plaque that usually leads to a heart attack. That's more of a chronic thing and that might lead to those anastomoses, those collateral blood flows that flow. But it's the rupture of those plaques that can lead to a heart attack. See the way a heart attack, those plaques really form is through constant inflammation of those arteries because 
of LDL. Now, if you've heard of LDLs, you might have heard that in a blood report if you get your, like, your blood work done or something. LDLs contain fatty acids and cholesterol that's being sent either from your diet so it can go back into your liver or your liver produces them so that fats can go to different tissues. Now, those LDLs, and randomly it happens, it can hit those blood vessel areas and get oxidized if it has some reactive oxygen species, ROSs. And those oxidized LDLs can get into your blood vessels and basically inflammation starts kicking up from there. If there's a macrophage, which is an inflammation cell, it can gobble it up and create foam cells. This disrupts the organization of the blood vessel. All of this leads to an accumulation of fat inside the coronary vessels. And we're specifically talking about the heart here. And all of this fat that builds up, it can lead to a plaque. And if a plaque ruptures, that's where the bad things can happen. It's basically asking for a clot to form. A clot immediately forms in that area and it can get very fast because it's a, if there's a plaque, there's a lot of things that are available for clotting to occur. And when there's coagulation, when there's clotting that happens within that vessel, it becomes occluded real fast. And that occlusion basically stops blood flow. And if that stops blood flow, everything downstream of that vessel that that was supplying will become deficient in blood flow. And if there's not enough adequate circulation to make up for it, that can lead to inadequate blood flow, inadequate oxygen delivery, and eventually muscle death. And that's basically it. That's how most heart attacks are formed. Now there are other things like emboli that can happen or some, some other drug-induced things that can happen, but the most common form of heart attacks is due to these atherosclerotic plaques, basically creating coronary artery disease leading to a heart attack. And that's where you get the chest pain, that's where you get the immediate thing, and if it happens acutely. And the only way to really solve it is to basically go in there and remove the clot or deliver drugs that can dissolve the clot or do something else similar to that, create like a bypass graft or something like that. So you might be asking, how can I prevent getting a heart attack? And it's basically gonna come down to that mechanism of how a heart attack actually forms. It's the oxidation of those LDLs, which are carrying fats and cholesterol. So the less chance you get of those LDLs hitting those coronary arteries, the less chance you're going to develop atherosclerosis. Now, if you've ever eaten like animal fat before, or honestly like any fat, you have some degree of atherosclerosis. That's what are called fatty streaks. And you might have them in all your blood vessels, but they're not to a level where they're gonna create plaques and they're gonna create that environment for uh, a thrombus or a clot to form. So honestly, at the end of the day, the more you limit your LDLs, the better your chances of not developing atherosclerosis. Now this is not medical advice, but if you don't consume a lot of fats, it's better off in the future for a lot of different reasons and heart attacks are a main one. Honestly, a lot of cardiovascular. So that's basically it. That's what a heart attack is. That's what the mechanism is. And that's what all the biology goes into it. Now there's a lot more that we can talk about and we can talk about like drug treatments and things that are done in the emergency room but that's not necessarily the scope of this. But I hope you did learn a little bit about what a heart attack is, the process of atherosclerosis, coronary artery disease, and how you, ways you could like use your lifestyle changes to prevent heart attacks and a lot of things like that. So if you found this informational, enjoyable at all, please do consider hitting the like button and subscribing down below. Appreciate it. All right, bye.